well, I think we can do it in an hour and a half, an hour and 45 minutes. So I think you'll learn basically how to do hopefully foolproof shoe pastry, uh, get a nice crisp um, outer edge to it, and hopefully not too soggy uh, a middle. Um, and then we do um, creme chantilly to fill it with and a chocolate ganache as well, so sort of three skills, yeah. Well, I, I, I'll be there, and I have seen you make eclairs on many occasions, and uh, can vouch for your uh, ability um, making making eclairs. Um, I just want to point out we also have some polls um, that you can join us. We want this to be interactive, and the first one, if I am doing my webinar correct, I believe I have just launched, and we're asking you who would you have picked as Star Baker this week. Um, so please uh, do vote. Uh, I can see the votes are flying in. Can you see this, Howard and Jay? Yes, yeah, so we, I can see it. Yes, yeah, so um, we I, have. I can only see. I can only see hosts and panelists can't vote, which is. <laughs> yeah, oh, I can see that. Yes, I've got that on the bottom of my screen as well. Howard, I've uh, I've not let you vote in this. I'm afraid. Um, no. <laughs> it, it's a, what, what's interesting here, and, and just obviously initially the the first half or so people that are voting with us, it's very split between. Her, her mind, Laura and Peter. So, uh, did you did you feel it was as clear cut as um, as it went to Laura in the end, Jane? Um, well, I don't know. When I look back at it all, given that um, Peter came first in the technical, and I really did love the look of his pasties. I thought the fish idea was brilliant, and you know he made a very very good job of his um, lemon tart with it, the, the black black currant sort of layer on it as well. So I don't think it was quite that clear cut. I might have put my money on Peter and Hermine just did a great job too. So you don't always know what's going through the judges' minds and you don't get to taste, of course, which, you, you know, it could be that they said something on camera that then got edited out to make it look a little bit closer. Um, but it was nice to see Laura do well. I think it might give a real boost um, to her confidence. And Peter's already had Star Baker once, but I, oh gosh, test my memory. I mean, hasn't had one yet, has she? So um, maybe it's her turn next time. It's just a shame she didn't get it on Pastry Week because she's always said that French patisserie is her thing, hasn't she? So it would have been good to get it this week, but she did very well. I like her, I mean, I like them all actually. Yeah, Howard, um, who would have got your vote this week if you were in the hands of giving out the Star Baker? I, I think I think James right. It's lovely if it's kind of shared round a bit, so not everybody, uh, not the same person, doesn't get it every week or or too many times. But personally, I I sort of looked at it and thought Peter, partly because I I felt that his originality was just sort of nudging it a little bit for me. Um, I think Laura produced a very strong cage for her cage tart, but she did use one of those lattice rollers in order to be able to do that. Whereas I think um, Peter constructed his cage all by hand, and although it was quite random, I, I thought it um, I thought it was quite nice looking actually. Yeah. So I thought his his originality this week and the fact he came first in technical just sort of nudged it a little bit for me. But you're right, I don't want to take anything away from Laura because I think becoming Star Baker is, um, is a fantastic achievement. Yeah, absolutely. Well, look, we're having various questions coming in and we want this to be uh, interactive. Now, I think what we do technically have the ability to do is allow people to ask um, their question. Um, now, Karen Cram is with us and I'm going to click on you that you're allowed to talk, Karen. So this is your moment. I can see your question, but why don't we hear you? Um, if you would like to ask it. So, Karen, go for it. I think you might be muted, Karen. I'm just going to give you a few seconds if you want to unmute yourself. Hi, guys. Hello. Hello. <laughs> um, I love the podcast every week, so thank you for doing that. Um, my question is, from the three uh, attempts that Linda made, or on the eclairs this week, could you guys see where she was going wrong? Should I go first? Should I go first? Go on then, go on. Um, yeah. we, I have looked at it and it is hard to see where she's going wrong. And the only thing I can think of 
um, and I'm sure Howard, you'll agree, is she must have tipped everything in. Maybe she put the eggs in at the same time as she'd got her water and her her fat bubbling, or maybe she maybe she didn't just shove the flour in as well. I think it was to do with the way she added the ingredients and she kept on doing it the same. Um, I'd like to go back and watch it a couple of times to see if I can really spot, but you know, if that's the only thing I can think of is maybe she added the eggs too soon or, or yeah, or just didn't cook out the, the flour properly before she added the eggs. Because if you do it in the right order, it, it it's foolproof almost. Howard, uh, anything else that you spotted? No, I, I think that's absolutely right. What, looking at what she's got in the pan, it seems to be a sort of yellowy liquid, almost a custardy kind of thing. So I, I, I think I agree with Jane. Um, it looks as if though, those eggs had gone in at the same time because if, if you were adding the eggs, you'd sort of see that there was a, a residual lump of something in order to amalgamate that with, you know, with the flour and the, um, the, the water and, um, and the fat should have been there in the first place and then add the eggs afterwards. So I think, I think there was something about the order that she, she was putting stuff in. Karen, I hope that um, sufficiently answers uh, your question. Thank you. Yes, wonderful. Oh, thank you. Thanks for your very kind words on the uh, on the podcast. We uh, we appreciate it. Um, I will go to um, uh, another question, uh, which is from Jackie Connell. We will try and allow Jackie to talk and, and come in. Uh, Jackie, you might have to unmute yourself. If you are um, yes. Hello. My question was really just about what um, Jane and Howard thought about the bakers struggling to be able to make brownies and eclairs when they're quite simple or straightforward or what you would expect them to be able to do. Jane. Oh, me first. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> eclairs, I have quite a strong feeling about uh, some of the basic skills. I think if you're going to be on, on Bake Off and, and you've watched it in the past, you should know what you're going to be expected to make of the classics each year. So you should be able to make shoe and, and if they give you instructions, make the shoe with no other instructions, you should know how to do that. You should know how to make a curd. You should know the, uh, how to make a Genoese because people have been tripped up with that in, in, in the past. So I think there's always gonna be things that they throw in a curveball like our year damp noodles, which I still have bad dreams about. Um, but you should be able to make those things. And I end up yelling at the television, but I certainly did last year when they, they couldn't make shoe. So um, yeah, they should know how to do that. They should be able to do it with their eyes shut. If they can't remember the quantities, that's not a problem because they're given those, but they should know the method to make those things. Um, brownies on the other hand um i was shouting at the television quite a lot because paul kept going on about how easy they are now i i know i've had messages from people in the states who say they make them all the time and maybe they're better at it than we are and i'm very very happy to accept that because i hardly make them at all because i don't like them i don't like chocolate cake i don't like chocolate biscuits i don't like much of cooked chocolate so for me I think the problem with the challenge is one, they all tried too hard with their combinations. Two, the brief was probably you must decorate them. And we, you don't get to see the brief that we get to see. And I felt so sorry for them all covering it with meringue and buttercream and everything that they covered it with because Prue clearly hated that. And three is the time. I mean, brownies, I think really need to cool down very well um in order to get the right texture and they clearly didn't have time to to cool it down enough then they're shoving decoration on and then they're trying to slice them up i think they were almost set up to fail with the brownie challenge and i don't think they're as easy as paul makes out that they are and um i think he was a bit mean about it because he made them they made the he made out that they were just they should have been able to do it and they couldn't and therefore it was a sort of comment on their baking ability which i thought was really unfair now howard you got anything further to add to, to what jane said there 
No, just just on the cares, I, I saw it looked as if um, a significant number of them had got the kind of basics. They understood about about the dropping consistency and things like that. So they, they, were, they were pointing that out. But it was a lot to ask for looking at it as well with the two different fillings and the toppings and the decoration. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, um, it's asking quite a lot, I think. So I think um, quite often that the technical challenge, um, they, they cram a lot of, of different elements into that and trying to get your head around that and do that against the clock is, um, well, it is a challenge. I know it is a challenge, but it really is a challenge. Yeah, Jackie. Um, anything further you wanted to uh, follow up on that? Um, well, I'm actually British American, so I have no problems with making brownies. I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> but no, thank you for those comments. Oh, thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you for uh, for joining us, Jackie. Where are you? Uh, where are you? Um, where are you at at the moment? Are you in England? I'm in New England. Yes, New England. In no, New England, England. No, England, 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 Old England. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Well, thanks for um for, for coming to join us. Um, we do have a uh, a couple more questions. On the, I'm going to go to Richard um, and see if Richard wants to uh, to ask his question. Oh, hello. 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 Um, yes, I asked in the chat. Um, obviously, um, of the three bakes that were done this week, which bake would you have liked to have been able to do? Had you been there? For this week's tasks, um, and what would you have done? Ooh. Howard, I hope you're going to say eclairs because um, you know, <laughs> where you're not teaching them at the moment. The amount of eclair classes we've got coming up. Well, I mean that's true. Although, although because it's a technical challenge, <laughs> you are you are forced to do the kind of recipe that you're presented with. So there's very little room for creativity on that. I thought the showstopper was was one that I would have loved to have done. Um, partly because it's, it's one of those kind of bake-off things where you think, a cage tart, why would you do that? And then you look at them and you think, actually, that's why you would do that, because it's quite impressive and, and, and quite attractive. So I've got this thing buzzing in my head about a kind of Christmas one, where you do a pear tart and then make the top look like a tree, so like a partridge in a pear tart or something like that. I don't know. That was what sprung to my mind, anyway. <laughs> well, that you... is very creative. <laughs> uh, I love that, Howard. It's too late at night for me to think that creatively. I'm not very good at today. <laughs> wow, I'm impressed. Um, no, I didn't get past the pasties, to be honest. Um, pasties, I, I'm going to give the pasties a go this week. I think they're, they're brilliant. Whether I'd get enough pleats in there, I'm probably not. But um, no, a delicious pasty would make my husband very, very happy. Um, so I am going to make a sort of Spanishy style one, I think. So nice chicken chorizo, maybe a bit of tomato thrown in there. Um, and probably just to sort of add, you know, Spanish omelettes are a, a great favourite here as well. So perhaps give it a bit of structure in that filling, um, some potato. So, yeah, chicken chorizo and potato, I think, would make a really nice pasty. But I'd use a short crust. I wouldn't use a rough puff just because I think the short crust probably will stand up to things a little better than a rough puff. And anyway, it's easier to make. So me, for me, the pasty is going to be the first thing that gets made this week. And I will have a very happy husband. Richard, what would you have most enjoyed making here? Oh, um, I'm not actually that. I'm not that. I'm not that good, really. I'm a good Victoria Sponge person and a good um, cupcake maker, but I haven't really expanded outside that yet. Okay. Well, I think a good Victoria Sponge is hard to beat. To be perfect, I try and sort of mix up the like the jams I'll use in the middle. Like I'll go for like a raspberry or a cherry, or I think I did a peach one once. Oh, that sounds nice. Yeah. Lovely. Just to, yeah. just to mix it up. Yeah, no, super. Uh, uh, um, cream or buttercream with it? Uh, cream. Oh, absolutely cream. I can't stand buttercream, really. So, yeah. <laughs> Richard, send me a slice. <laughs> I shall try. It might be a bit dented. <laughs> oh. Might be a bit squashed. <laughs> Richard, thank you very much for, uh, for joining us. Amongst everyone else here, we'll... Uh, 
we'll assume you'll be signing up to join Howard for the Eclairs then to expand your range of... Uh, of <laughs> Yes, all mine, all mine, sort of later, you know, just don't, not just Howard and his eclairs, don't forget my Christmas house as well. A lot of <laughs> up, including Jane's uh, biscotti and Florentine's class uh, in mid-November. But um, we will move on. I just want to open the second poll, uh, which was about who should have left, because in the end it was a, a victory um, for uh, Flora in terms of who would have been star baker. But I've just launched our second poll. Um, who should have left um, this week? So uh, do feel free to, uh, to give us your answers um, there. Oh, yeah. Wow, it's a landslide. It's an absolute mm -hmm. landslide, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, and this week, uh, Howard, it, it wasn't really one where it, it, there was any uh, jeopardy, let's say, in terms of who, who it looked like might leave. It was a fairly obvious week, wasn't it? I, I think you're right. And I, I think there was one of those odd moments where I, I think... Um, uh, Paul said it's painfully close between the two Marks and Linda, and I, I thought I don't think it is really, unfortunately. No. No. Did, Jane, what was it like? Did you did you always know when you're sort of there in the tent? Like, I mean, you must have a fairly good idea, or are you so in the zone of what you're doing that you don't pay enough attention? Um, it's not that you don't pay enough attention, really. It's just you can't see, so you're. If you're at the back of the tent and, you know, you've got how many people in front of you, you can't see what goes on. And very often it's not until you watch the programme yourself mm. um, do you find out what's gone wrong on some people's benches. I mean, you're obviously there for judging. Um, and so you know the judges' comments on the, the flavours. And I think it depends if it's close. Um, if it's close, you really don't always have a clue because I'm not privy to how they mark or whether they've got a point system um but if somebody's got a disaster you know a bit like, like poor linda you you can you know the death knell is there on her shoulder um but it, it's sometimes easier with um the person who's going home just because it usually takes a disaster i mean our year paul val the year she went home she didn't get everything out of the oven, therefore she didn't fulfil the brief. And um, yeah, you're in the tent. They try on the television and make it out to be uh, closer than it is. But if you're in the tent, you usually know who's going home. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I think. That's, um, that's um, well, a huge week here for for Linda on the uh, on the vote. So uh, thank you for everyone who who contributed. I'm so sad she's gone. I really mm. like Linda. Well, yeah, really like, she lives just up the road from where I was born as well. So sorry Aww. to see her go. Um, I'm just going to go to take another question, which is from Emily. So Emily, a uh, heads up, I'm coming to you. I hope you want to ask your question. If you don't, I will I will read it. But uh, if you'd like to unmute yourself, then uh, then please do. Um, are you there, Emily? Hi, Emily. Emily, hello. Uh, Emily, I'm going to read your question out for fear that maybe I've put you on the spot and you, you didn't want to read it. Um, hi all, thanks for doing this. It's so nice to be able to bounce questions off you as soon as the episode is finished. So excited for Japanese next week. My question is, if you could choose any theme week, what would you choose? Howard, have you got, have you got a special week that maybe you'd have uh, wanted to choose? Well, to be honest, I, I'm really intrigued about Japanese because I don't know anything. As, well, I don't think I know anything about Japanese baking. So um, I'm intrigued to know what, what, what that will include. I think Jane and I have, have said before, I think Bake Off works really well when it's stuff that you feel that you can do at home. So I think if it's, if it's not too extreme... We, we, I think we criticised in the past dairy week, didn't we? Because that was a bit, a bit of an odd theme. Um, and I think if they go a little bit, did you do Tudor? Uh, yes, uh, we did Tudor. Oh yeah, yeah. We did Tudor. That, that was yeah. a, a, an unusual one. Uh, but yeah, and, oh, in nineteen twenties, I thought it was a bit far fetched last year. But um, but yeah, I, I do like um, to be. Um, exposed if you like to other um, types of baking so I think if they are doing um, you know baking from other countries I think that's great I would, I would happily do something like a Scandinavian week 
um, you know, I, I think that would be great. Um, but yeah, um, it, it's getting that balance right between still doing things that people can relate to, but actually just broadening the horizons a little bit as well. Jane, is there a special week you'd, have, uh, you'd like to see? Uh, yes, I, I would probably like to see, because my daughter's in, living in Spain, well, Barcelona, so um, Catalonia at the moment, and um, she can't bake because she hasn't got an oven, but a lot of the people she works with do bake, and they make some amazing cakes and pastries, as well as lots of lovely savoury things over there, so... Spanish stroke Catalonian stroke Basque week would be lovely to try some of those wonderful breads I made. Um, I can't remember what it's called in the Catalan, but it, it's, it's a, a flattish bread that you brush with an aniseed liqueur and it's baked with pine nuts on and it has sugar on and it's absolutely delicious. Um, so to try some of those, um, either Spanish or Italian week, I would love because I also really enjoy um, cooking some of the pastries from from Italy. So yes, different cu cuisines from around the world. I don't think I'd like Scandinavian very much. My sister-in-law is Norwegian and they live in Norway and um, they're probably going to hate me for this. They have a cake called um, World's Best, um, uh, which, oh, is no. a, a, <laughs> which is um, a cake. And I think it's supposed to have some fruit in it or something. But you also bake it with meringue on the top. Um, and, and yeah, um, World's Best, I'm not sure that it is. So I've real apologies to you in Norway um, and Scandinavia. Um, but I think I would pass on Scandinavian week and stick to some more Mediterranean bakes. Um, or, you know, we had Tudor week, so I, I was wondering, you know, if they're going to go back in time, are we going to have sort of uh, um, Stone Age week and everybody mm. has to use old implements and, and no electrical equipment. So it'd be quite interesting to see what they might come up with. I love working to a brief. It's great fun. Um, fantastic. I hope that answers your question, Emily. Uh, we're going to go over to David, um, who I know is in New York and has joined us at a few um, online classes um, and who wrote a question in the chat. I hope David is there. Dave, what was your question? Hi. Um, since I've had the joy of taking classes with Howard and Jane and gotten some background on how things work inside the tent, with the pasties, a lot of them were critiqued for being dry. And so if you were planning that bake, I would think because it's going to be sitting around while they're cleaning and you're doing your glamour shots and all that stuff, what would you would you be doing that planning for that in the beginning and how would you try to fix that problem great question jane what would you do all right me well a classic pasty actually has a, a i think it's skirted beef and all your vegetables and they get cooked they don't get cooked in a pan and then put in the pastry they get cooked in the in in the pastry in the pasty and i think where they fell down um peter being the first bottom of my list hit, not the bottom of my list, but the bottom of my list, if you know what I mean. Um, Pre-cooked his fish and then put it in and then would have baked it for another 40 minutes. So it's not surprising that the fillings got to be dry. So for me, I don't know whether you heard earlier me say that I would put chicken and chorizo in mine. Lots of lovely fat in the chorizo. I'd use chicken thighs, which is a really moist meat anyway, and make sure there's a bit of moisture in there. So I would put a bit of tomato in. You have to get the balance right so that you don't make your pastry soggy. So go for a fatty filling. I think that's why uh, Laura's leeks and cheese work so well, because you've got the fat of the cheese in there to keep it moist. So the trick is if you're going to put fish in, say salmon, lovely oily fish, um, don't pre-cook it, cook it in the pastry, it'll cook perfectly in, in 30 minutes, the pastry will be cooked long after the fish is cooked. Choose something oily, don't overcook the filling before you put it in the pastry, but I'm still going with my chicken and chorizo because yes, it's actually making me salivate now, so that's what, uh, that's what I would do. It's interesting, they all did seem to pre-cook theirs. Mm -hmm. It almost seemed like that might have been part of the brief or something that they had to pre-cook their filling. It didn't seem No, like I don't think it, it wouldn't have been part of the brief that they had to do that. I think they all just thought that they had, they probably, it was the best way. Lottie didn't, of course, with her beef um, and had hers perfectly cooked. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I don't think that would have been part of the brief, but um, yeah, who, who knows actually. 
Um, David, thank you so much for your uh, question and thank you for uh, being such a, a regular guest at our classes. Yes, and, uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you, David. <laughs> um, Americanize, uh, I would say, a few recipes as well to help make sure we've uh, we've learnt our super fine sugar from our caster sugar and uh, our Fahrenheit from our Celsius. Uh, <laughs> the biggest, biggest challenge of all is actually happening um, this weekend where the clocks go back here in England at... Um, 2 a.m. on Sunday morning, but don't go back for another week in America, Howard. So we are, we're actually only four hours away from New York rather than the north. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, um, that was very helpful. Um, Interesting. Was well, look, thank you, David. I want to come actually to, to Lisa, who is also um, in, the, uh, in the US, and, and come to her um, for her question. So let me just see if I can... Uh... Oh, what have I... Uh, <laughs> as I try and find you here. Yes, here we go. Uh, Lisa, start. There you are. Let's see if you can uh, unmute yourself. Yep, there you are. Yeah. Oh, it worked. Okay. Hi. Um, so here in the United States, we love pumpkin spice during this fall season. Pumpkin spice is in everything and everywhere. And while it's delicious, it gets quite boring. <laughs> and I was wondering what are popular fall flavors in England? Howard, what can you suggest instead of pumpkin spice? Do you know, I don't, I don't actually know what's in, what the components of pumpkin spice are. I'm assuming it's probably something like cinnamon or, or nutmeg or, or something mm -hmm. like that. I mean, they, they are kind of still quite popular um, flavours for this time of year uh, here. Mm -hmm. Star anise, um, cloves as we get towards Christmas. Um, I don't know anything else that you would use other than that. I, it, it, what 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 is pumpkin spice then, Lisa? Let's let's get that out of the way. What what's the component <clears throat> parts of it? Uh, you said it very well. It's usually cinnamon, nutmeg, cloves, and allspice. Oh right, okay. <laughs> yeah. So you want something different to that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's for flavoring pumpkin. Um, no, for dessert flavors in general. So we don't have to have pumpkin in it. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, I'm drawing a blank on anything hey, other than that. Hey, can you, uh, can you suggest... Jane, can you think of anything that... Well, I, I, I experimented... Oh, it was last year now. God, time goes by so fast. Um, <laughs> of making a cake with apricot, uh, ap I can't speak, <laughs> um, apricot, orange and saffron. And saffron's mm. sort of spice that I like to use a lot. Um, I find it quite difficult. You have to really get the balance right. But a mm. cake with um, some saffron in, not too much. So I did a bunt cake um i pre-cooked some dried apricots in a little bit of orange juice just to soften them up and then i probably only put eight or ten um saffron stamens in with the liquid while i was cooking the orange and the apricot to to get the color and the flavor to infuse and that added a really delicious taste to to the cake and i did it for a, um, some special event and People absolutely loved it. Absolutely loved it. So I would say, give saffron a little bit of a go in your cake. Um, I have got some pumpkin spice. I've tried the pumpkin spice, and I must admit, I find it a little bit overpowering. So I, I, don't, I mm. tend not to use it too often. I find it a, little, a wee bit sickly. Um, but I, I really like hazelnut as well. So you don't necessarily mm. have to have the flavor coming from a spice. You can whack in some ground hazelnut to give a bit of extra flavor as well. Um, and I love the nuttiness at this time of the year, I think some sort of toasted nut that you then grind down mm. and, and replace some of your flour with the ground nut, I, I think is delicious. You know, you could do that with, um, um some toasted walnuts don't i don't put them in raw in the cake i toast them beforehand mm. so get your flavors from that way otherwise i'm i'm a huge fan of orange i i tend to put orange in a lot of things grated zest of orange 
um, mm. it goes beautifully in a chocolate tart. Um, and you sort of, if you're making the ganache, just infuse the cream with the orange zest before you mix it with your chocolate. Um, yeah, some natural flavors. I like natural flavoring as much as um, any, anything else. So sort of the fruity or nutty flavors would win it every time for me. Brilliant. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Does that help? I hope that helped. Where are you listening from, uh, listener, uh, Lisa? <laughs> Sorry, I have something in my throat. Uh, Utah, actually. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah what time is it in utah? Town, utah it is around uh 2 50 almost 3 p.m oh okay so you have daylight yeah. i've got pitch black out oh yeah <laughs> i think howard we are we are doing an event together i think for utah university soon bizarrely so um oh, are, are we all right oh. how exciting oh. <laughs> uh, for about um, apparently about 100 students at Utah University so we we look forward to that um, I, I will not be doing the teaching Howard I'm afraid that is on you um, <laughs> but, I can um, do that <laughs> you know, a very uh, a very special potential guest to uh, to bring in um, who Mary Berry no <laughs> really Paul Hollywood <laughs> but it's not Mary Berry um, um, another former contestant, Karen Wright, looks to oh, Karen. <laughs> you there, Karen? Hello, Karen. Hello. Yay. Welcome. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening to you too. Karen, just, um, just quickly tell us because people are uh, are asking at this point. I want to launch the poll and I want to hear your your thoughts. Who do you think now, Karen, is is going to win? So I've launched the poll, so we'll get to see what everyone thinks. But we've got obviously Dave, and mine, Laura, uh, Lottie, Marky, Markel, Peter. Who who are you tipping now, Karen? Now this e this from this evening, I would go for Dave. 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 Thank you. Yeah, Dave. Dave. Oh, let me just look at my notes. So Dave, what, what is it about Dave, uh, Karen, that you think uh, makes him? Well, what do I think about Dave? <laughs> Well, I was very, very, very impressed with his um, cage this evening. I thought it was absolutely amazing. <laughs> and it was like a, a piece of artwork. Um, so, yeah, I just, no, I just got, I've just got, hold on back to you. Yeah, I just, I just think that he's got some, um, something going on that's, I've, I've spoken to a few people that I know, you know, and we, we just think he's got it, Dave has. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. so interesting, Karen. Thanks for popping yeah. Um, Because, um, Howard, we've done our poll here, and there's not a single vote for Dave. So, obviously, Karen hasn't <laughs> taken part. But, um, Peter, <laughs> Peter has got over half the vote, uh, and I think he's, he's your tip, isn't he, Howard? I'm keeping my mouth shut, because I, I think if I... I, I think I, I said... Um, I said Rowan previously and Sura didn't I? and both of them went so I I think it's just best you, please do not listen to who I think is going to win <laughs> um, please don't no. Jane you you were also in the Peter club potentially yeah I am in the Peter club I just think <laughs> for one so young he has so much knowledge he stays really I think he's I think he's brilliant I I no, I really like Peter, but I think amongst the rest of them, I like Mark. Oh gosh, I think they're all pretty equal, to be perfectly honest. I wouldn't like to pick three finalists out of there. But the Marks, I oh, but then her mind's good and Laura's coming into her own and oh, Lottie, I absolutely okay. love yeah. Lottie. You talk about <laughs> cages. Lottie's cage was genius as well, but made right out of shoe pastry. So I think I'd pick if I had to put my life savings on it. Um, which isn't an awful lot. I'd probably put Peter as number one, but I wouldn't like to choose two and three. I think I it's too obvious that now. Oh, do you? Oh. Sorry, I don't know. Oh, no, I mean, obviously, obvious. there's no way. It's just like, yeah, it's it's such a. My dad was my dad liked to to bet on the horses, you know, and uh, I was quite good at reading farm. And um, at this stage, I'd never go with a favourite. Wow. Oh, so we're oh, okay. So I'm, I'm looking for an outsider. Mm. Looking out yeah, for an, an outsider. outsider to come up on the rails. Am I? I think so. No, okay. Well, we have, haven't we, in the last couple of years, where we've had people who who look like they're sort of 
started so well and, and been star baker a couple of occasions and not quite gone on to win no more so i guess that david last year wasn't star baker until the mm -hmm. very final week of course so um we're here we've just got about five minutes left so um i'm just going to go and take a couple of questions but thank you karen uh, you'll have to no, join thank you it's been a, it's been an absolute pleasure of course <laughs> You, uh, see you uh, very, very soon. See uh, you soon. Uh, join us on the podcast soon, Karen, again. Mm -hmm. It was such fun. We'll have Karen there. Um, Karen also has uh, a few classes uh, on set. If you want to have a look, I'll put the link in the uh, the chat. Um, let's just go to... Um, well, this is an interesting question from Hannah Young. Uh, slightly out, but I think this one might... I'm going to definitely come to you, Howard, on this, and you'll see why in a moment. All right. Hi. 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 Thank, my you, thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you. My question was if um, either of you, have, when you were in the tent, ever felt unwell or hungover or overly tired and you felt like it affected you in the challenges? Howard, we'll concentrate on the hungover and then we can move into the rest of it. <laughs> yes, I, I, I was. I was hung, hung over twice, actually. Um, so Biscuit Week, I went into Biscuit Week, and if you get the chance to look at Biscuit Week on Series 4, I go into the tent and I am literally green. Um, <laughs> so fortunately, uh, Christine Wallace introduced me to Parsley Small with Added Caffeine, and by the technical challenge, I was sort of feeling a bit better. It was dreadful in the signature bait. Um, but then um, came bottom in that technical challenge, so I, I still think I was I was struggling. Um, so literally everything was resting on me, trying to sober up enough for the um, showstopper, and I I did a good job in that. So that was good. Um, but I also then did it again um, for the final, and although I didn't make it to the final, um, I was I was hungover when when we filmed the final and uh, unfortunately as well they took the photograph for that that year's book and there is me standing there with this biscuit tower that I've made um, in order to uh, be in the book and um, when the book was published people the other bakers were saying what on earth were you doing you look so bad in that photo and it's like yes because I was really really hung up I was so miserable looking terrible photo but yeah so I was I was hung over in the tank I'm afraid <laughs> Jane any any memories of uh, of being overtired maybe or like it must get harder as the weeks sort of get towards the end well I don't know I'm a bit of a tough old bird really um I, I'm, I'm a gardener and was a gardener and um and I was pretty fit so did Mel and Sue did say to us once we got to week five you know that the rush of adrenaline and excitement begins to wear off and now it's stamina to the end and it really is stamina the the worst week I think for most of us was week six which I think they call but botanical week it's one of the, one of those silly names mm. for for whatever it is and um, we'd filmed at the weekend whatever it was I think it was pastry week the week before I can't really remember but, and so we'd gone home on the Sunday and then because of the sh filming schedule we were back down at the hotel on the Tuesday night so we'd only had about a day and a bit at home and then we used to get picked up at six in the morning. So it's an early start and a long day. And we were all so tired, having really not had any time to recover. Um, and we all had disasters. And I think we all cried at some point. You don't see it on camera. The only person who didn't cry, actually, we never managed to get to cry, not that we were trying, was Selassie. He managed to be very cool through all of it. And I don't think Rav did either. But we were all, oh, the weeping and wailing that went on in botanical week, you wouldn't believe. So I think I think that was the worst week for me in the tent, uh, was just the sheer tiredness because we hadn't had any recuperation. But you see, I don't drink. Um, I'm a real goody two-shoes. So um, no hangovers for me, I'm afraid. So Howard, shame on you, shame. Mm. Hannah, did you ask that question thinking you've seen people that are potentially hungover in the tent? 
Um, I think I've listened on your podcast before and I think Howard had maybe mentioned before, but also Jane, <laughs> had, men Jane had mentioned that as you go on, it's kind of stamina that kind of keeps you going. So I guess probably by the semi-final, final, everyone was probably pretty knackered. You do see people drop away, um, mentioning no names, but we're, we're all trying as hard as we can. And then you get to some weeks because of just the way we, we get um, briefed on the challenges. You, you look at them and you think, oh, you just don't care this week. I know we all want to get to the end and not go home, but you can see that it's like people will go, oh, God, that'll do. Um, I'm just tired. And it does take its toll. Mm. Uh, you just have to be stubborn and resilient and get your head down and get on with it, really. And, and I just didn't want to go home, so I just uh, kept on trying. But uh, you can almost tell when people have run out of steam. Um, well, look, thank you so much, Hannah, uh, for listening and, and joining us and, and being part of the podcast. And, uh... Thank you. Thank you. Yes, my thank, friend, you. My, thank you. My friend Emily was actually the lady that sent in the question earlier and she was gutted she couldn't take off her microphone. Oh, that's a shame. Oh, we'll give her our love. And next time, I'm sure we'll do something again, if not next week, I don't know. But uh, it, it's, uh, yes, guess to dial in next time and, and work her microphone. We will have one final question, uh, if that's okay, um, and that's going to come from uh, Nidia. Um, I will uh, try and ask you to join us. Hi. Nidia, what's your question? Yes, my question is connected to the time frame issue. Are they not constantly cutting it shorter and shorter? And then how does that kind of pressure plays out? So what do you mean, Nidia, by shorter and shorter in terms of like the challenges like getting tougher with the time? What exactly did you mean there? Correct. It's like, you know, it seems like all of a sudden you have to just do something in 90 minutes that normally would take three hours for them to do the ideal product. Yeah. Um, got, Howard, have you, have you got any thoughts there about the difficulties there? Yeah, I, th I think it's, um, I, th I think all the challenges that are done, somebody has gone through and timed how long it takes to do that challenge. Um, but, but you've also got to bear in mind that they are doing something which they've either done previously because um, that they're having a couple of goes at it in order to perfect the recipe. Um, and also they're not doing it with the same kind of pressure of actually being a baker, being a contestant in the tent um, with the cameras on you and with people coming around and asking you questions. So I, they don't have the same level of, of pressure. Um, so it is perfectly possible to do all of the challenges within the time that's allocated. It's just that sometimes um, with a technical challenge, it may be something that you're not familiar with and you're trying to get your head around it. And other times with either the signature bake or the showstopper, the bakers have just tried to be a bit too ambitious about what they can actually get done within that time. Yeah. Jane, anything to add on that? Well, I mean, I absolutely agree with Howard. Um, I do think they cut it to the bone, but they have to because the timing, sh the filming schedule is so tight. They can't really stretch the time too much. But I mean, I've said this on the podcast and um, probably said it last year as well. You... Um, you learn or you should learn that actually that it's the cool it's usually the cooling time that scuppers people so if you've got to decorate a three-tier cake it's not the length of time it takes to bake a cake really or decorate it it's the length of time it takes to cool enough for you to be able to do what you want to do with it and i noticed it particularly this time and i think it was laura at one point when they were making their tiered cakes they're they're um using deep cakes in deep cake tins and then slicing them well they take forever to cool and although it may seem oh I've only got three cakes to bake and then I'll slice them it actually would be a lot lot quicker to cool if you cooked six sponges half the deck because they'd cool a lot lot quicker the, the cooling time isn't anyway you, you get them you get the idea um but you really need to learn that and I think if if you planned all your recipes out before filming starts 
once you've cottoned on to that, you can't really go back and change all your recipes again because one, you're not allowed to change your recipes too much. So if, if, if anybody is thinking of going into the Bake Off, plan to get those things cooled and use shallow cake tins because if you use shallow cake tins you will be able to get them cooled in time whereas a cake that's this this deep is just not going to cool in time so i think it's it's how you manage that time and it's all about time management sorry i'm rattling on i know but we had to make um danish pastry and if you look at any danish pastry recipe they'll it'll say right do this do that do that and then chill the pastry overnight and undoubtedly you get a much better pastry doing that in the tent you can't do that so they give you three and a half hours to do something that should take 24 and it's who copes best who's planned it the best it's, it's a level playing field it's down to you all and, and the fact that some people succeed and produce a beautiful for example danish pastry and some all the butter leaks out it's just who's planned it better than than the rest and it's all about juggling and I think, as somebody said, perhaps Prue said to Lottie, I can't remember whether it was last, you know, whenever, you only have to be not the worst. And each week, you just have to get your head in front and try and plan it to be not the worst, I think. That was a long answer to a short question, sorry. No, no, absolutely. Um, well, just um, before um, everyone goes, Howard and Jane, you have to pick what you felt was the best question. Uh, because we are giving away an online voucher to the person Ooh, who asked oh, the best oh. question um, today. Um, and just to, um, hopefully this will work. I think I can uh, show everyone on the, on the screen here. These are the online classes that we have at the moment. If you go to our website, baitwithlegend.com on, online, baitwithlegend.com slash online classes, you can see the uh, various ones we've got coming up. We've got Wagon Wheels with Julia this Saturday, Howard's a Claire class, Dan's Pasta is a Nata, how is uh, Profiterol Stack, uh, Madeleine, and so many more. So do uh, do head over to the website and there'll be more added. And I've been uh, asking Jane to come up with something else Christmassy to put in as well. So, oh, uh, yeah, I need to do that. Yes, I will do. Um, <laughs> what do you think was the best question you asked? What are you this, uh, this to? Oh, do, do you know, the, um, I suppose the most memorable one was about whether, we, whether I'm ever hungover. <laughs> okay, um, un unless Jane of Jane's Hannah, we will uh, you and, and give you a, a voucher. So uh, we look forward to having you you join us. Um, but look, thank you so much. Obviously, we, we're now about to go and do our, our regular podcast. So that will be up um, tomorrow uh, morning at about 9 a.m. if you want to listen. And yeah, thank you so much. I know there's people in here that have never heard of Bait with a Legend probably before today. So welcome. Um, and for those of you that have listened to the podcast, previously or been to classes we uh we appreciate it and we hope to see you uh, again very soon and if howard and jane enjoyed this enough, maybe we'll maybe we'll come and do this again and sometime soon um so yeah uh, thank you so much jane anything to say no not to say it's just that we have got to now do the podcast and look i've got three pages of notes from the it, what, what's difficult for us is we watch the program and make loads and loads and loads and loads of notes and then I like to watch it back and enjoy it where I don't have to write anything um, so uh, yes just feel sorry for us we are going to be burning the midnight oil to bring the podcast to you tomorrow but we have great fun doing it don't we Howard and, we uh, do. and uh, um, Diane, Dan's joining us is it Dan? Dan is, Dan is joining us this week as well so uh, once he's put the children to bed, I hope they're asleep now. So uh, it's been lovely. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. It's been great fun. Thank you. Thanks so much, everybody. Take care. All right. Good night. Thank you.